Commissioner Whittington? Here. Alternate Bailey? Here. Alternate Gladiker? Here. Chair Martinet? Here. Are there any revisions to the agenda? If not, does somebody have want to make a motion to approve the agenda? I'll make a motion that we approve the April 11th agenda. Second? One second. Okay, all in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Okay, approval of the um, March 28th minutes. Any, any, any changes, first of all? We always have to check to see if Steve's name is spelled, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is this time. I move that we approve the minutes of the March 28th meeting. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Um, public comment? Is, is there any comment from members of the public on items not on the agenda? Steve, did you... Yes. Yeah, so Do we have a microphone? Just this uh, I'll right here. So you, know. you just stand up kind of in front of the stand. Uh, it should capture the recording. Okay. So the time now is a quarter of make it easier for me to see. Uh, yeah. Watch here. My name is Steve Prestash. I live at 131 East 30th Street. Um, this is from a science fiction writer, 1963, Clifford Simak. He says, law can be approached in many ways, he thought, as pure, pure philosophy, as political theory, as a history of moral ideas, as a social system, or as a set of rules. But however it was viewed, however studied, no matter what the emphasis, it had one basic function, the providing of a framework that would solve all social conflict. Um, now, today's paper, Denver paper, it said uh, Senator Julie Gonzalez had expressed the concerns about the land use bill and its potential to dispel current residents. If the zoning reform bill passes and land in key areas becomes more valuable development, housing advocates have said that could lead to the developers pushing out existing community in favor of higher paying tenants. Um, much of what the city council has done, so long that it's passed already, has uh, in the past, I've been a victim of uh, the uh, gentrification, acceleration of the gentrification. And I think a lot of things they did was extreme overreach. That's quoting an abortion article that was in the paper today. Um, Denver paper, uh, March 27th. Democrats in turn countered that gun makers were too insulated from civil lawsuits and companies enjoyed protection that other industries didn't. Representative Jennifer Parente, the bill's Democratic co-sponsor, said victims of gun violence should have the opportunity to seek fair justice in a court when industry has contributed to the harm that was bestowed upon them. Uh, two minutes have passed. The, um, so they're talking about the gun industry uh, being uh, held accountable. We need to start to hold the uh, realtors um, industry accountable for gentrification um, in communities where people of lower income or middle income lose their homes. Um, the uh, tobacco industries were held accountable, the opiate ind industry held accountable. They passed a law now in Colorado legislature to hold the gun industry accountable. It's time to hold the uh, real estate industry accountable for accelerated gentrification that um, hurts the local people. Um, the Center for Disease Control talks about how gentrification causes heart disease and things like that on the affected residents. And I would say that's the case here with me. Thank you kindly for your time. Okay, thank you. Does anybody want to have a comment for Steve? Okay, thank you. Is there anybody on Zoom or anything that anybody wants to speak? No, ma'am. No. Okay. We're up to housekeeping items. First thing, Dehive update. 
I don't have an update. I sent you all the story that was written in 2019 just to provide some information on the person who bought the place um, at that time. And I don't think that it's been sold as, as far as I'm, you know, but we were wondering, somebody wanted to contact him. Did somebody want to contact him? see what his plans were i just I think, think we that, talked about that yeah i think it would be okay you know i mean i think it would be appropriate if we wanted to since she did mention us yeah. it wasn't us, us but good. it was the other yeah. us yeah i think Chip and i can handle that i can probably handle that i i will draft a letter is that the, just yeah just an update letter just to see what the plans are if there's any way we could help maybe the offering our Mm -hmm. advice or anything like that not being very negative trying to be very positive and reaching out mm -hmm. we talked about last time that uh, there's a it's the title one and title two of the code that um, talks about the i guess the intent and the purposes of the various uh, you know the city council and various commissions mm -hmm. and there's there's a, a list of of um of responsibilities that the historic preservation commission has and there was a line item two in there I informed it that that I think would make the this reason out to be appropriate mm -hmm. within that purpose statement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was very enthusiastic when I talked to him about coming to Leadville and who knows what's gone on in the during the pandemic and everything, but I'll be chat we'll be chat yeah. Okay. Help me draft the letter and it'll sound better. Um okay, I think Laurie, you're it's you're the stickers person. Oh, I ordered stickers. <laughs> um, I was surprised they're not here yet, so um I'll follow up tomorrow mm -hmm. and see, but they will definitely be here so we can do the sign, put the on signs. I ordered um I can't remember the numbers, but I ordered several of the four by six type mm -hmm. type ones and then several smaller ones so that we can hand out in different places as well. And they really did I bring it down here? They really turned out awesome because uh, they're actually the shape Ooh. with the rounded top the and the, yeah, it's a cutout. So it's nice. look really cool. So were they expensive? Um, I can't remember how many I got. Uh, the bigger ones were like a dollar forty each. Oh, that's not bad. So, and the other ones, the small ones, were like a dollar five each. I just I had a maximum or a minimum. Amount I had to spend that I was right at that. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. It was 150 and I spent $153. Okay. That's great. So great. That's great. Thanks for doing this. Sure. I'm just anxious for them to get here. Okay. CLG grant on track for funding. So. That would be me as well. I, um, you know, I told you guys I had that weird thing that I didn't know what I was doing. It was a self a risk self-assessment. Mm -hmm. Donna and I got together and we filled it all out. And I even got with Lindsay to make sure we were doing the right thing. The mayor helped because it asked what year your city was chartered. And, mm -hmm. and he was like, it wasn't chartered. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> we didn't do that whole thing. But we got it all sent off to uh, Lindsay and I got an email confirmation that we are now completely caught up with everything we needed to do. And we will wait for their meeting They'll schedule a meeting with um, the city and Metcalf and the state, and then we'll sign all the agreements, and then we'll be. Mm -hmm. So as soon as it gets funded, um, that. But I like the ball being in their court, so mm -hmm. we are yeah we, today with everything we needed to do. So that was the only point I was trying to make. That's good to hear. May I ask a question about that? Mm -hmm. What's Metcalf? Once we sign the agreements with Metcalf, will they? Is there a way to have them come and make a presentation to us about how they're going to do this? I would hope yeah. so, because we yeah. need to be able to be, you know, That's the plan. let the people yeah. in the community. Prior to them starting work, we will have a meeting with the HPC mm -hmm. and Metcalf. So if people ask us questions, we'd understand what the process is and what people could expect. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank yes. Because I've heard a few questions already, you know, people are a little fearful that somebody will come onto their property and do things and <laughs> I said that no that's not going to <laughs> not <laughs> going to <laughs> work <laughs> but you know who knows okay so um everything's all of our oh I do have one thing if I may Madam Chair I'm sorry I received an email um last week um from the Golden Borough who said the weather vane on the borough sign had a the metal Borough at the top mm -hmm. flipped upside down and all the winds we've been having. Mm -hmm. So they were going to get it fixed 
and ask if they needed a COA. I did reply back because the guy was coming that day and he's coming from Denver, so I wanted them to get it finished. I told him that was under the uh, already approved and mm -hmm. COA because part of fixing the sign was on there. So I just said, Yeah, that it. makes sense. So I just wanted to let you guys know. Okay. No, nothing else, huh? For now. <laughs> nothing for now. New <laughs> continued business. Uh, Whittington Section 106 Review Summary. I read through that. And that was very helpful. Oh, great. Um, yeah, I attended an all-day workshop in Portland on April 1st and uh, was subjected to more than anybody ever wanted to know about psychoanalysis. Uh, but um, now I'm going to subject you to some of it. I don't know that I'll make you listen to me for 20 minutes, though. So. But there were a number of presenters, including a couple of people way up in the hierarchy of Metcalf archaeological consultants. Oh. Oh. Um, and I, I did talk to Kimball Banks briefly about Leadville, and he is familiar with the city. Um, I don't, I think Signe Snortland is based in South Dakota, so I don't know that she knew anything about us. But um, you know, like everybody, they said, oh, that's a wonderful city. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, so Section 106 is sort of the core of the uh, National Historic Preservation Act of 1966. And it's two sentences, and they're very specific. And so I think there's, you know, we, we recently had to do a Section 106 review for the Justice Center, and I don't think any of us knew really knew what we were doing or why or what it was all about and so i can sort of explain that now um, section 106 only comes into play when the federal government is somehow involved and there is a historic structure a historic object a, a, a place of cultural or religious importance especially to a native american tribe and so the reason we got involved with the Justice Center was because there must have been federal funding that was involved. And I'm assuming that was coming from the Department of Justice, but I'm not really sure. It was a USDA. USDA, okay. USDA. All right. Yeah. So, yeah. so in a case like that, the, the USDA is the um, agency that is really in charge of the whole thing. And so somebody at that federal agency has to set this whole section 106 process in, a, in, in, um, in action. And so it's all at the responsibility of somebody in the federal government to do it. So we as the Historic Preservation Commission would never cause or, or start the process unless we got a federal grant. Or something, and it was going to have an impact on the national, the historic district. And in that case, we still would only be the applicants for the grant, and it would be whatever agency gave us the grant that would be in charge of the Section 106 process. So, um, so the as I said, the only reason we were involved with the Justice Review mm -hmm. was was as a consultant. And uh, we were way down on the on the hierarchy of who gets involved, and sort of at the bottom. And so they wanted to, I, I guess they wanted somebody, somebody somewhere above us decided they wanted us to give some sort of review of the plans for that justice center and decide whether there was an adverse effect on the National Historic District. Um, you know, now that I know what an adverse effect can involve, and it can be direct, a direct adverse effect, or it can be indirect, I think maybe I would have looked at that Justice Center in a more critical way than I did at the time, because it's right on the edge of the historic district. And mm -hmm. so even though it's not necessarily causing a building to fall down or uh, anything like that, it is going to have an effect on the on the public's view of the historic district. And um, I don't know that we, at the time, really understood what 
how many effects something can have. And so, um, you know, we, we made some suggestions for changes to the plan, but maybe it would have been appropriate to make a lot more suggestions to the plan and to the landscaping and to everything else. And the distance, the setback, you know, all the things that we consider here in a historic district that were different about that particular construction project. And the th the fact that we said no adverse effect, somebody above us may say, well, yeah, there is an adverse effect and it has to be mitigated. Mm -hmm. So if it's determined that there is a direct or indirect adverse effect to something in the, that's covered by the National Historic Preservation Act, then there has to be negotiations. Um, there generally has to be a plan to mitigate that adverse effect. And then if and then the hope is that all parties will agree, and then that mitigation effort will occur. And that, that can take a lot of different potential um, ways of happening. It, it can be you can move a building. you can, you can shore up a building, you can do historic preservation to a building, um, or it can be a less direct mitigation effort. Um, they talked about with Native American tribes that let's say a, an archeological site is going to be destroyed by a pipeline, then one way or ways that things can be mitigated could be scholarships for students or paid internships or creating a cultural center, things like that. So there are a lot of different ways that mitigation efforts can happen. Um, I, lo I love some of the acronyms like area of potential effect, the ape. Um, they, the, you know, when you're involved with the federal government, they love their acronyms. And so I heard of an awful lot of them. Mm -hmm. um, but some of the things that you know were just said in passing that I found interesting is that um, integrity is really important to uh, historic preservation. And integrity involves a lot of things. Um, it involves the location of a build, let's say a building, location of a building, what surrounds it, um, what who, who it's associated with, things like that. And I was I was thinking I had heard that you can't move a historic structure and have it continue to be a historic structure, but I looked it up right before the meeting, and in fact you can. And we have told some people who've come to us and want to destroy a, an outbuilding to move it rather than destroy it, and that's a legitimate thing. It's, it remains a historic structure if it's moved, um, if that. But that's not, I mean, that's sort of peripheral to this. That's since we're not initiating the section 106 process, that's our own decision. But the good thing is that doesn't mean that that structure is no longer historic. Um, and so I, I don't know, there's a, there's a lot here. And it, this was, these are notes from seven hours of people talking at me and so, um, and I was just writing furiously. Um, I I was definitely an out the the outlier in the in the room. I was the I mean they were all basically everybody attended was archaeologists the way I am. But I was there because of being on the HPC, not because I was going to be working on a pipeline mitigation effort or something mm -hmm. like that. So. Um, these, and and a lot of these a lot of the comments were related to the effects of projects on um, on to tr on tribal lands or or religious lands things like that. Um, let's see. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. One statement I heard that I thought was interesting is mitigation is not monitoring destruction of a property. Um, that's not, you know, sometimes uh, people 
with these projects will say, well, you know, we're just gonna have to destroy the property. That's not mitigation. Mitigation is saving the property, moving the property, doing something to, there has to be compensation that's commensurate to the amount of destruction or damage that's being done. Uh, so I think there are a lot of really interesting things. Yeah, another thing I thought was an important statement is that integrity is important in determining the amount of an adverse effect. Um, but also the condition of the property doesn't matter in the Section 106 process. So these are all things that I think we think about as part of the HPC, but in a somewhat different context. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, yeah, I, that's that's sort of it in a nutshell. I can't, I'm not going to go into seven hours of what they said, <laughs> but does anybody have any questions? Really interesting. Uh, I was just curious if you could, um, I see like in your, in the memo, you talked about the state's interaction, the shipbuilding interaction with the section 106 process, but maybe just in the context of like the community justice center, um, you know, we talked talk about how the HPC was pretty low on that total control in terms of the review. And obviously the state is above this, but what are the, the state's responsibilities um, in terms of administrating the section 106 review, you know, specifically the, um, the state office, office of uh, historic preservation? Um, the federal agency can try to pass the buck on to other agencies or even to the archaeological consulting firm to try to get them to do much more than they're supposed to. But really, it's the federal agency's responsibility in a case like this. And so they probably were, or maybe maybe were putting pressure on the on the, ship, the state historic preservation office to take on more responsibilities than they're supposed to, um, or maybe they were just delegating. And so they were saying to the state office, "Okay, we'll find find out who we should talk to associated with the historic district." And so then they con contacted. Um, the city or us, I'm not sure how the contact came exactly. Um, but really, they were, you know, they're definitely a level down in the hierarchy of how this works. With the federal, right? Right. Now, there can be, there can be all, you know, sort of parallel state laws to the Section 106, but it probably works about the same way with, um, you know, if the state is, uh, if it's a state law that's being affected, this somebody at the state level would have to be in charge, and then they'd be looking for consultants, and they'd be looking for firms, historic preservation firms, to do work, and they would work. It should work about the same way, only with one level, one less level of hierarchy. Okay. Thank you. So do you think we'll have to hear something on this again? Because again, it's like Steve said, it, it, it's triggered by federal funding. Mm -hmm. So if you're getting a grant that's federally funded, then I would think that would trigger it. And almost, you know, let alone having such a large national historic district, it might be triggered for any kind of anything that gets a federal grant. Do you think well, it, it, it can also be a it can just be a federal permit that's required. Um, and any any federal government involvement in, a, in any way triggers it. So I would say around here, what we could see, what we could find is the EPA getting involved um, within the historic district and you know in relation to another mining claim mm -hmm. or something like that. And that could that could cause the whole thing to be triggered. That wouldn't and and it wouldn't necessarily have to even be a grant involved. It might be that um, maybe they wanted to move uh, move waste piles here in in the historic district. That would probably trigger it. Mm -hmm. As fast as technology is advancing with with cell phones, I would expect that in the coming years the HPC would would have some kind of involvement with. Some kind of uh, cell phone communication device, you know, so a wireless communication facility because that is regulated by the FCC and it does require a permit. And so, if someone 
wanted to, you know, if a wireless company wanted to come in and provide, you know, 5G, 6G service in Leadville, um, and they have to get an FCC permit, then that would initiate a section 106 review. Um, so that that could be enough, just you know, another option for how we might see another kind of like a section 106 review come for some kind of um, you know tower on top of a building or something. So that could happen with the fiber optics that are coming in right now, potentially. Yeah, like like Steve saying, anything that requires that federal like a federal permit. Right, but it, it's not really our responsibility to be looking for those things. Mm -hmm. um, Somebody at the federal level will tell us when they want us involved. <laughs> and we will talk, won't we? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I th thought it was just really important to know something about what it is and what it is not. Um, in case we do have to do another Section 106 review, and I guess maybe we will one sometime mm -hmm. in the future. And I have to say thank you. This is so much more information than I can give when we've got that mm -hmm. for us to do. There wasn't a lot of information out there. I think this is great. I think it's a good summary of seven hours. Right. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but thank you. Well, they, they did give us some food, so that was good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um finalized 2023 awards. And I'll just explain why I put it back in your kit. Um, I did put the, and I also wanted to, I can't remember who did this. Scott, was it you? Um, I, I think put this together. It's not oh, the, the PowerPoint. I think I have yeah. the pictures, but I don't know. Oh, well, um, Mark and I did. Hmm? You and I did the PowerPoint. We last did. Year. Yeah. <laughs> I was so glad it wasn't me because I'm like, I don't, I don't have PowerPoint <laughs> software, so I didn't do the PowerPoint. I yeah. mean, okay, well, you sent like, the pictures. Well, then I guess, yeah, you, you sent me the photos and yeah. then I put them into your PowerPoint. Okay, so, I remember the photos. You know, I can, I can point, do, I can do that nice. again this year if somebody was sent me photos. And I think photos. the point of me including this was to go off of your list. Like, we didn't see mm -hmm. that um, by Tim Harrison. We didn't think the old mortuary had gotten an award because. They weren't quite finished yet, and and they did. So I just wanted to make sure that we didn't double dip, if that's a word to use at this time. But um, oh. yeah, I just wanted to make sure that we really finalized our list for this year to make sure that we. And I don't know if um, the parklet across the street got put on the final list. I thought we had talked about that. I guess maybe I just don't have a proper list. So um, my first question was, who did this and can you do it again this year? <laughs> yes. Okay, thank you. I and can then take based off what, we, <laughs> what awards we gave last year, what awards do we want to give this year? Based off There's what a list here somewhere, isn't there? Yeah, in the, in the minutes from last meeting, it's St. George's, Golden Borough, Five ten Harrison, but if we already gave that, then probably don't want to do it again. Um, as lovely as that building is. We did do the Golden Borough, though. We did. I think it's, is and it a new set of I would things? say they have a new COA. So, I mean, they have a substantial mm -hmm. COA going on that we could very well give them mm -hmm. another one because it's for different things. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah and then the public. Looking pretty good. It really is. <laughs> I thought about the Peyton this afternoon. The neighbor was over there talking to her. How's the parklet going? Uh, it's looking they're, really good. They're gonna they're repriving it today. They're going to paint it. Um. So yeah, we're making progress. Perfect. One of these days, we will flush. Um, I will add something to the parklet. We are, um, I know this may not be the right time, but I will come back formally um, as, you know, as a program and talk to you guys about um, the uh, <clears throat> the cart locations um, that are in the current location and um, some ideas um, that have been floating around the core group. Um, but so we'll, I won't take up time now, but um, but I will kind of present some ideas after I have time to talk to the mayor about some ideas, but we want to um, keep them on the property. We may move them to kind of cradle the entrance. So um, do it, do it fast. I'm going to meet with Tony tomorrow. 
<laughs> so we're working, well, what, what's kind of holding up that process right now is kind of um, managing snow um, during the winter time and making sure that we're not making it difficult for the street department to get in and out of there. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and then there are other things that, that we're doing too to the parking lot area that don't affect the overall aesthetic, but um, but the, the cart. So we want to kind of get pe people's formal feedback on that if you have any. You know, if anybody has any adverse reactions to it, we'd like to know, you know, just some help. Thank you. Okay, hurry. So you're saying when you move the carts, that's when we should give you recognition or? No, I'm uh, not, no, <laughs> no, that was separate. separate. Oh, um, separate. I think in terms of recognition, it's up to you guys if you want to wait until the park road is complete. I don't know when you give these awards out. Is this, um, it'll be this month. Okay. If mm -hmm. we need to table to that, I mean, I don't know, you know, we're open. If we need to like focus on completed projects, I mean, it's not done and it won't be done until Sunday. So. Yeah. So if we gave it in, then it would be very visible if you all put it on or near mm -hmm. there. And that Absolutely. Might, might be that would be lovely. And, and I don't yeah. think we gave us uh, 510 Harrison their award last year while they were still under construction. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. yeah. 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 You can see what it's going, Probably, going to right? look like. Right. We don't have an overflow of other projects. So mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah, it was striking to see a, a list of them and that there were what, like four substantial things last year? Um, yeah. Oh, you weren't at the last meeting. Yeah, I'm sorry. Great. I had, we do yeah. have a, is the list, is this list in your packet? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. that's, yeah, to see that's how, it. Yeah, how few they were. I know. It, which, it yeah, have. there's some sort of problem. Not that the year before, like Joey said, they don't think they need to get yeah. the DOA. So we can have some outreach issues. Mm -hmm. Okay, so does that mean 809 Harrison, yes. St. George's, and the Golden Borough? Is that it? Is there something else? Um, hmm. well, most of this isn't done, right? And, and most of these, like we were saying last meeting, Scott, they haven't even started. 800 mm -hmm. Poplar hasn't done anything. 139, East 9th hasn't done anything. Yeah, the info, the container. 930 right. hasn't so done anything. Empty lot has still. What about Mandalay's property down? Oh, yeah, I forgot about those. That, that's, a, that's a good one. I mean, other than it's taken so long ago. I, they are, they are. Probably live to you guys, but yeah. They are in the finished process. They just started the finished process finally. So we're going to start seeing some progress. Hopefully they'll address the window issue, but uh, but that did come before us and mm -hmm. that would be a big one on Harrison Avenue. Sure. Yeah. And work with copy knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you guys think about 311, 313 Harrison being added to the list? Did you get in touch with the architect or about the windows? It's my fault. I don't think we've talked to Morgan yet. It's been 50 minutes. That's crazy. We were going to talk to Morgan about the plans that Steve saw at the French shop. Yeah. And I still, I don't think we do. Yeah. Okay, then we can't make a decision mm -hmm. on giving them an award if we don't. <laughs> well, now that we're in the middle of being so nervous about the front mm -hmm. laps. Yeah. We, we need, an well, we need to make sure they're doing what they yeah. said they were. Mm -hmm. Right. You don't want to give somebody an award and then find out they did the complete opposite of what you asked them to do. So so it looks like three three places then. St. George's, the Golden Borough, and the Parklet. Mm -hmm. Is everybody in agreement on those for now? And then we'll I think. think about 311, 313 a little later maybe. Okay. Does anybody um, know anything about 315 Maple? Um, I thought you were the one that said it was an addition. Oh, you had said you hadn't gone by it. They were doing an addition in the back, like I, I want to say like an ADU and a deck, but it wasn't like a, a livable ADU. It was more like a garage type. And they were putting um, a deck in the front. But I, to my knowledge, they haven't done any of that either. They, you don't think they've done the project? No. Oh, okay. Well, that that doesn't matter. And that's a problem with most of them on our list. Mm -hmm. Is and and that just creates follow up because mm -hmm. these DOAs are only good for two years. So, as we said in June, 
it's not the Lily B shed that we could say you have to come back and get a new application, but we're not going to tell you there's more to bring up right now. Mm -hmm. Let's see what happens with that. <laughs> okay. So um, should I get pictures to Marsha and Steve and see if we can't do something like this for our next meeting and do the award? Well, if you have photos, then I don't have to do anything. <laughs> That's true. Right? That is true. <laughs> but, and I'll find some photos. Hmm? I'll find some photos. I mean, so if you don't you have them, I'll go take them. Take, take them well, let's see what we've got. Okay, let yeah. me know if I need them. Okay. And I have some. Okay, okay. perfect. I think, yeah. I think you you supplied the text that I dropped into this last year. So, Lori, no, no, Marsha did. So, oh. Lori, can you give me the what I'm going to need is sure. the names of the owners of this of the right. properties, the address and what they did. Kind of like this is yeah, okay. I that. yeah. I can okay. do that. Good. Hopefully, we'll have more next year. People do what they're supposed to, we will. Hmm? If, if people do what they're supposed to, we will, and well, stop ignoring us. Well. Okay, guess what? We're up to the open house. Really? What time is it? 4.36. 4.36, so we can hang out for a bit. Mm -hmm. I do want to tell you something that I'm going to do um, just in the interest of transparency. Amy Tate called me and asked me if I would meet with her. She and, and her husband and, and a partner are buying the property. That's all I know. I'm also she, meeting. She also reached out to me also. Hmm? She also reached out to me also meeting her. We're buying which property? Okay. She just wanted to know about the COA process and I'm going to meet with her. Did you already meet with her? No. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did you well, say what property or just a property? Well, no, but I thought I'd ask her okay. when I met with her, you know. But after I thought about it, I thought this might be a bigger property than, you know, somebody's house or a new house. And so yeah, when I actually, what I intend town. to do. Hmm? So they were buying some property out of town. Hmm? So they were buying some property out of town, but I don't know the one in town. Oh. Anyway. It's on Harrison. Oh. It's on Harrison? Yeah. And you know, two for sale, so I'm going, Nancy, what do you know? <laughs> do you know anything? No, news to me. Um, mm -hmm. It'd be great if, I know Manhattan's very motivated right now, and uh, I think that um, the 500 Harrison's pretty solid in what they're doing right now, so there's not going to be an exchange of ownership there right now, as far as I know. Well, what I was going to tell her, I thought, is that she should come and meet with us when they are starting to put their plans together. I, you know, I don't know what she's mm -hmm. going to say, so I don't know. If it, I don't think it has to do with, well, I don't well, know. Well, and you can tell her the process, because the mm -hmm. process is rather lengthy. I mean, when somebody calls, you know, the city and asks me what the process is, I just kind of go through. It's a four to six week, sometimes six to eight week process, because it has, it requires public meetings before the Historic Preservation Commission, as well as the uh, Planning Council, Commission, maybe. you know, and so I, I try to say, you know, it's an application process. This is, I kind of just explain the process. So mm -hmm. I'm sure you guys can cover that and explain to them and maybe even figure out, you know, substantial and substantial. I'd be process. surprised if they didn't know the process, but. Um, um, that's kind of what I was thinking. <laughs> and that's, I will just check the email. It's, she actually said historic district, not Harrison. So. Uh, oh, mm -hmm. uh, the historic sure. district. Here, Sarah, Harrison. Historic, well, I think that's the historic picture of Jordan. It's the mm -hmm. entire service. Mm -hmm. The only thing I would say is I think it's fine, you know, to have the individual conversation pre application. Once she's formally submitted an application, then, mm -hmm. um, you know, then she should just be with the staff. And mm -hmm. plus, if it's uh, you know, no communication outside of a public meeting, but there's, I guess, before an application, you know, mm -hmm. just, um, yeah, she would know, ask have about the requirements, you know, for the application and then she would all the um, you refer to staff and I can refer to others. Yeah, I'll be interested to see. Who knows? It's almost, uh, it could be good. <laughs> or not. <laughs> anyway, that's all. Oh. Uh, can I say something real quick? Uh, yes, you may. Lines, the same lines. I've had two conversations lately that, uh, well, they've been good. One was with Matt Lightning. 
reality through 13. He seems to really care about the historic context of his of his uh um, and so that I just and like that, you know, we'll see, you know, whether he's doing exactly what uh, the CLA, you know, dictated what he was supposed to do. The other one was Eileen at uh, at 500 Harrison. He seems to be uh, wanting to to restore that building, but that's a huge project. Hmm. Just it's in such bad shape. And but what she did say is she's going to need help lots of. Them. And so I think the HPC is probably going to be fundamental in, in trying to help her through that process of historic tax credits, uh, both state and federal. Uh, so just, you know, I, I really like her attitude, but we'll see what happens. Um, just a side note, she went a step further and um, engaged mm -hmm. Colorado Preservation Inc. CPI to manage her historic tax credits and grant uh, uh, grant submittals. So um, yeah, so she's not leaning it. I mean, mm -hmm. she's got some professional advice behind her, including Larry Lucas. So um, they they've got their hands full, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Hence why she actually hired CPI. They're, and they're not cheap. So. Good. Well, I'm glad she did because she did. I'm sure it'll help. Madam Chair. Yes. Um, first of all, I like to move. See, I'm glad Mr. Lively asked for permission, which he didn't initially get. Um, <laughs> he was first comment. Um, I'd like to make a comment on the proposed city code amendments that are in this packet. Well, we're going to have an opportunity to talk about those, you know, in a public hearing at some point. This is a public hearing. It's a public meeting, but it's not a public hearing. It's a nice, it's a nice meeting. We'll be. It technically will not be a public hearing, but it is it's an open house that's been advertised. Mm -hmm. um, so we were, you know, from four o'clock until we're expecting six o'clock to be in a public meeting. We're going to be getting the open house and set to all those at, at five o'clock. We got. Mm -hmm. so, well, we won't have people giving testimony to this afternoon, will we? They're not uh, like public, it's not a public hearing, so mm -hmm. they're not public comments that are. That are Reporting. There will be a time for that, though. And of oh, course, it's so a city council decision, not ours. So. So we did. I mean, the, the, we did as a commission. We did. You know, instead of we're about to go into an open house, you could take public comments. I think that would certainly be appropriate. Just recognizing that it's not a public hearing, um, where these. Required or each of these individual comments are required to be recorded. Mm -hmm. But if you want to say something just off the cuff, go for it. Okay, so um, uh, the city of Leadville had a protection in place. Um, I think it was a 36 or 38 uh, foot building height limitation. And then uh, one city council did away with that. So we have some. Incredibly humongous buildings on the left side where it's like a Doberman with uh, uh, puppies or something. I mean, it's just a, a way out of a, a proportion. And now the city wants to, through the proposals, to uh, limit my ability to um, uh, work on my property because it's in a historic dis district. They want $500 for me to build a shed there, which they may, you guys may or may not approve. Um, and there's other things that I've contemplated in doing that property for the longest time. And I won't be able to do them now, probably, because I have to go through a committee and go through all this kind of stuff. So um, we seem to be more concerned about accelerating gentrification with these provisions here than we are concerned with allowing people to do what they want with their properties. And um, $500 to build a shed, that's going to create a hardship on me. And $500 to request a hearing to uh, put some, uh, uh, I want to do some things with the doorways. Uh, I have some old truck hoods that I want to use to make as a, you know, like, so the snow is not right in, in front of the doorway. And now that probably may or may not be approved. It's just, you know, so these things seem somewhat arbitrary and capricious to me. And, and especially when uh, we had a historic commission and my neighbors up the street, they closed the window, they modified, I'm talking about the uh, 
the property at the corner of uh, of Plum Street and um, East Third Street there on the uh, southwest corner. Um, got rid of one window. They turned the other window into a long view window. They put a false uh, French door thing on the back end of the south end of it with the anticipation that they'd be putting French doors in there. And then they also uh, destroyed a historic shed that was a solid building uh, built with uh, three inch planks and, and uh, uh, 12 inch uh, timbers. And when I brought this up, it was like, oh, okay, well, it's okay for them to do that. So a lot of this stuff here that's going to be approved from my perspective will be done on how well you're liked in the community and how much money you have to uh, uh, spend it, instead of just allowing people like me to do what we want with our properties. Thank you for listening. Uh, can I ask who, who you brought it up with before? You said you brought it up. Yeah, I brought it up at a city council meeting. And I, well, wait a minute. No, I, brought, I, I put it in writing, I believe. During one of my court filings, so I, I think I, um, uh, this the CUP for this uh, organization um, was uh, was approved, and there was a provision that. And, and I'm, I'm trying to make a long story short here, but I, I believe I brought this up in one of my court filings when I was challenging the city granting this particular business a CUP. Okay, we don't deal with CUPs in there. This group. But it was a historic building and they were making modifications. And we are concerned very much about historic uh, sheds being torn down. We would, if that came before us, we would have to consider a demolition. And we tend to be not particularly fond of those. Well, but this was another group. I know it was not this particular. Okay. Well, it, it, the city, it, it was just like the, they had favored status because they were recognized as a social. A certain socioeconomic group that goes into neighborhoods and revitalizes them. In fact, that was uh, one of his brags at the uh, CUP hearing when he went to get the CUP. So the whole thing is, is they were given favorite treatment. I brought this up to the, I think th through a court filing, and I also talked to one of the building inspectors, and he didn't want to do anything about it. Well, that's okay. That's well, all, just, all out of our purview. Um, and in, in terms of what you're talking about for the charges for applying for um, a certificate of appropriateness, which is what we provide, there are provisions for people who are planning projects to speak to staff outside before they actually put in an application to see whether they need to put in an application or whether it's going to be insubstantial, which is inexpensive or substantial, which is more expensive. So there are, there are provisions in this so that, you know, it's not automatic, but something you plan to do is going to mean you have to shell out $500. Oh, okay, thank you for making that insubstantial, substantial thing clear to me. But one of the things I want to do is I, I need to, uh, reinforce the foundation where there is no foundation and that I think that would be an insubstantial thing. So we'll see you know, we'll talk about that later. Uh, yeah. Um, and I guess another thing that you might not be aware of is there was a period when there was no active historic preservation commission. And I think some of those, I, I'm pretty sure that some of those really tall buildings that you're talking about got built during that period. And um, so we're, you know, we've been in existence here for what two years now. Um, before that, we have no real control over what happened, and it's unfortunate that some things did happen. It would be good if we could default back to that having the city council approve that the height limit was I think it was thirty eight feet or thirty nine foot on a new new construction, and that would be wonderful. It used to be thirty five. It used to be thirty five. It's still thirty five building height. I thought they did away with that. No, still in code. Well, then how do those guys get to build these monsters down the street here? I wish I could tell you that. Oh, okay, I, all right. I, I wish I could. I, I don't know. Okay, thank it's you. Still there. At thank you. Feet, so. Okay, you guys, I'm passing around the name. Yes, I'll do it now. Is there no? <laughs> I don't want to take it if you're finished. Send it back. Um, if we want to go ahead and 
Is there anything we need to do? Because I'm thinking maybe we should leave the diets and kind of start setting the signs around where people can actually walk around, maybe get some refreshments and, and wait for the anticipated rush that could be coming any minute now. <laughs> what I was thinking is that if you know, perhaps we'll have some um, people attending via Zoom, and so if we can keep things visible from the owl, um, in okay, the so center, the that would be good. So that's kind of what I was thinking having the posters kind of along okay. this, this side, and then maybe since the red lines are not something that we're going to be, you know, somebody's going to be viewing from the owl, if we can have those back there. And then, you know, obviously, people can uh, sit, can sit down over here. But if there are any specific questions um, that I from anyone on Zoom that I need to uh, pull up, I can share screen, share the packet. So I'm going to just be kind of keeping an eye on the way. Ask questions on the red lines and on Zoom. If, if I can answer any questions on Zoom, I'll pull the packet. But other than that, I'll leave the commission to uh, to the, the posters and everything else. Okay. Just remember, we have to adjourn the meeting at the end. Yeah, Don't run out. <laughs> well, we, well, you, you can adjourn us for that. I've got to have a motion. I'll second the motion. I'll second the motion. I'm trying to lose it. Hey, hey. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, thank you for coming out. So, I think so, uh, 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 so, yeah, I'm going inside or ripping my phone. Really? You know, when I had the other dogs, he was fine, but now by himself. This president made a good model for the past few times. Thanks, sir. Oh, this is the Anyway, if I were going to write an Thank you.
this thing is always going to be like, oh, what's your, what's your mode of separation? Yeah, it's not really good. So, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Thanks for letting me be part of the thing. You had all these people who asked me. You felt like a star. You feel like a star. No, I mean, I think we should be talking about being more visible, and I think we should be. And a lot of people just me afterward about that, you know, about this group. Yeah, yeah, maybe you just need to start sending a person to all the little things. Maybe we could even get permanent rooms. Like, <laughs> but I mean, yeah, even going to the council when our things go to the council, I think we tend to let Lori do everything. You know, it'd be nice. Um, Lori used to sit in on the uh, Lori Ty used to sit in on our main street board meetings, which are once a month, and I think it's really important that we have that connectivity between our main street and HBC to the middle and all the things that they're in. But um, then she's so focused on, on other things, um, and it makes uh, you know, some of these pieces. It's not, you know, it's not on each piece of time. So I really want to remind you that Sunday Simons um, doesn't attend these meetings, and I don't feel like there's a deep connection. Like, just, you know, I just, um, I, you know, I would be open. I know it's a lot of fun. I'm not in. But even once every few months, if you want to come in, you're always welcome to attend our things. Like having the word, yes, we have the word. Um, I think we can come up with something yeah, that to be. It has to do with saving the old outcome. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
A couple talked to me after that. I talked at that thing, and they said that they'd like to be involved in this group, especially the people who live here. And I, I haven't heard back from them. They don't have to sit down and talk. And I just thought, I don't want to have like friends of old buildings, but you know how people have friends groups and citizens in them. Or then they can raise money and Yeah, and then give money to the There are people that were really interested in this. Reaching them is, you know, sometimes yeah. having a problem. But the new people who buy houses, so a lot of them really get interested, you know. Yeah, it's almost like counterpart. Initially, we had so many spots. It would be nice to give people their help with prayer. Some other way that yeah, they can do research, just like volunteer research on their own houses and other people's houses. Uh, raise money to way to craft people do like workshops, like how to properly restore. Um, yeah. Yeah. They used to have, you know, at the college, they had historic preservation. Yeah. And they taught me the historic yeah. preservation. Yeah. And they don't do that. And I was so disappointed when it went to the state. Yeah. 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 It's just sitting there. They, they had classes out there, you know, because they were restoring some of the old buildings on the ranch. I don't know of anything that's going on. They actually look into the ranch. But I was, I was excited when the same, you know, and I covered the same that I didn't manage to take the classes when I went, you know, to the college. Yeah, so yeah, it would be nice if we yeah. They, I guess it was yeah. not a popular course. And it should have been. Yeah, and you can make a lot of money because I know what how much those people charge from our <laughs> but they charge for what they do on their master, you know. <laughs> I'm oh, about the different costs for doing historic restoration and preservation work. But I was talking about the college. You probably want to hear that. The college had a course. And it was really nice. But they didn't have pictures. It was a really great guy that started it. He was really good. And of course, he got a better job somewhere else. Do you need somebody like Mark to teach their people in school or town? You don't have to always go with the eight hundred dollars a page to find the original college. I mean, that stuff like that is kind of that's true. Well, that's true. It's not going to be an historic project. It's not any more expensive because it's not really possible. To restore it properly, it costs more of the past historic. Thirty years too old. Yeah. Thirty years old. There's so many things that we can do. Preservation. That's a good idea. How do we, how do we communicate that? Yeah, 
It's almost time to be I think if any group in this town is for this so I mean, we're not gender Well, and that's what that's. But that's the perception every time somebody cleans up the whole house. Yeah, it's the perception every time somebody comes in and spends some money on it. And it does. I mean, it does make a difference. There's something true to be said. That's not a. It's not a malicious thing. And that's not a material motive. Ideally, we could have some mechanism to support people So in the winter time, there are groups, or at least there have been in the past groups that will advertise on Facebook to come and shop us for free. need to put together like a cleanup weekend or a, or a, a lot of the houses a lot of the properties around here could really benefit from just having a community dumpster, one day in a small community dumpster, so people would have a place to go and stuff like that. Let me just you know, for years, the dump used to do free passes. If you paid for them, they'd give you a coupon for a free loaf. They didn't do that this last year, but they've done that in the past, and it's pretty effective. So things like that could really go a long way to help them. Really, really, really nice. I don't know how to organize it necessarily, but those kinds of things could be happening. Oh, sure. No, absolutely. That's no, very true. You know, we get a lot of these. We'll do these curve over here to the center. We'll go into the first street. It's not gone to the end of the street. Right? It's just an accident. The street it never moves. So that kind of thing is your first step. Why are my trailer that I use for my dump trailer up at my house. It's a, about once a month, and one of my neighbors will say, hey, and that's what's up for next time you go to the trash. Yeah, yeah sure. Mm -hmm. Just don't take advantage of it, but yeah, sure. So you're one of those people with the trailers that goes to the dump. Just, yeah. just in the winter. Or today, the mud is so deep at the dump today, I almost got stuck. It's a truck in the trailer. It's just disgusting. But it's, uh, it's the only right way to do this. If you get it out of here, take it to the right place, you can stack it back. So we'll never... Right. <laughs> yeah, if you need to have a group that could do more to just minor maintenance stuff or some of the boss here, I'd say, if we need if we can work together, we wouldn't be able to do a bunch, but if we could get a few volunteers to do a set project and then make a year for a year something that's not so dangerous, you're just even going to fall in that sense. Or like on the street, it might be a street here. There's a house where the front porch collapsed because of snow two or three years ago. And it just needs to be jacked up and post put back in place or a new post put in place. But that don't think anything like that's ever happened. It's now been a couple of years. It's really have to be a community effort to get that put back. It seemed to be rare. I don't doubt it. It's a lot of that stuff. It doesn't have to be, none of this has to be expensive fixes, but it just requires somebody to. Oh, it's got lots. Yeah, I mean, like if I have time, so I need to go. I'm like a But I mean, you know, you can't even find people. It's hard to find people. You know, it is. You know, it's never it's never cheap. When you say it's necessarily expensive, but I mean, you don't even have the money to pay for it. You can't find people. Yeah, that's what I always talked about. We have one. <laughs> <laughs>
Somebody does hire somebody. Another no, that's very true. Yeah, I had uh, six guys last year. Everybody wants to work on this? Yeah. 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 Yeah, we were there. Yeah, I only got the end of your year. We were there. We got there a little bit. Years back, well, only cars that was any good. No, I just think yeah. you know it's good to show stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. Usually yeah. that you know, usually the same community starts 30 or 45 minutes late. So you're like, oh great. We got there and we missed half of it. Yeah, she was exposed to them. Uh, 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 they don't want to hear from us every year. I'm not sure this year, but it's, you know. <laughs> but they should, right? <laughs> We got we got a kind of face time out there. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. It's fun. It's fun. We'll figure out how to just because just this year nobody just came nobody yeah but there's a lot of work that's been in. well that's what I mean there was twice as much work this year as there was last year if we had almost no CRAs the word's not getting out or people are just avoiding it I don't know we yeah, need to start actually sort of serving people if we see work going on or well and that's that's difficult. I mean, that should be done by the community yeah. service officer, mm -hmm. which is which is a tentative and part time position. So, I don't think we have anybody that does stuff like that. They'll send somebody out of the court. Yeah. 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 And he is, he's not there. Yeah. Yeah. He's not there. Yeah. He's not there. Yeah. He's not there. He's not there. He's just like, well, yeah. So that's the thing. It's like that. But, uh, so now that's not sensitive. It's not smart. Yeah. But it's typically. Just. The so building, 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 building is starting to start yeah. actually. So a lot of seats have been up and they stopped it up. Oh, uh, just like through. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. 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 So that's been interesting. Yeah. He's, yeah. Uh, he's, he's so good. He's so yeah. But if you see somebody you walking, like it. oh yeah, he's been here for a while. Oh, okay. So we're just gonna. Well, that's good. We're just gonna have a person on the side, but I don't think that's it. So, so. Are you on like every commission now? <laughs> <laughs> Just planning and zoning, <laughs> but I am on both city and county, so it's kind of interesting because they're opposites. Are they? Yeah. So, like with the short term rental stuff, uh -huh. the city is has their focus and complete opposites. How we reconcile that, I'm not quite sure. 
there's so but it's interesting to tell me just like yeah. anything goes yeah. well the county wants more short-term rentals uh, because the wants to uh, well but down. county doesn't have to worry about parking they don't have to worry about uh, infill they don't have to worry you know most of the most of the county ones not including west have a lot of space they're spread out and they're trying to keep houses for something vacant for six months at a time they're sort of a strong realtor push of the county planning commission well, Heather Lind is the chair, but you know, she's actually, she's probably one of the most conservative members of the, of, of the commission. She's been on there for a long time. I know. And she actually, Espenly, gave up all of their short-term management. They don't even do short-term management. And I don't know whether that was from a, from a visibility perspective or just because okay, she thought it was the right thing to do. Uh, they no longer have to do so does Melissa have not work for us? She does, but she has long term rental. Yeah. So they completely got out of short term rental. Yeah. 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 Two months ago, not very long ago. People keep saying call her, you know, when you read on, online, people. Oh, I, this is wonderful. This is great. Yeah. I did a lot of work for her doing the short term stuff. Mm -hmm. She told me that he's hired her when he came back. Because we lost one of the hospital people who had to move. And she's, yeah, this is great. Yeah. She's only doing long term She doesn't do any short term Good. So she did a race for but she still had to work around those So that's good. Yeah. Although I think if you're going to have short term rentals, and we have some, uh, having the professional in the office is really important. Oh, yeah. So, uh, I, I guess I'm not having a professional name eliminates all the way he calls to when he gets us back. You know, it's the guys who want to do it themselves. Or 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 no, very true. So it's interesting because it's they they tend to be opposite mm -hmm. uh, on almost every. So. That is interesting. Interesting to watch. But I think that's it. Three days a week is not. <laughs> so then you're running for commission? No. Nope. <laughs> so, a lot of Yeah, but I'd be running for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> I think a lot of people run for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> But my experience. <laughs> well, it, it was, sometimes I feel like that's the only way we can really make a difference. Uh -huh. yeah. But I don't know that I ever want to put myself in that position. I don't know how to do what you do. It's much easier for me to get down to They have an advantage much on the commissions. We don't. I mean, that's serious. Yeah, I, I couldn't I possibly have that. See, and that's amazing because every other mayor has brought that to you. No, I would think. How can it now with. Yeah, it's. Uh, with social media and everything now, it's a, it's a treachery. So now, for me, it's. You know, that's what came from. You know, people deserve respect. I mean, yeah. frankly, yeah. I only had issues. Like, people think, oh, you must try to have issues. It depends on real life stuff, though. So that makes life. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's yeah. good. But the whole thing right. about commission thing. Yeah. Man. No, that's a tough one. And it's, a, yeah. it's a, you know, unfortunately, yeah. it's really kind of thing. Yeah. 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 yeah, city council would be interesting only because it's. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. A little bit, yeah. yeah but that, but maybe not nearly yeah. enough for what to do. Well, guess what? There's a couple of people watching, probably the right option for May or two. <laughs> I think it's time for a woman here. We've never, I, 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 to, I totally agree. In fact, I've been having a conversation. What wasn't there? A, a, I don't know. Anywhere, anywhere. I've been talking to some people and I said, I said, do you realize that 80% of all of you are going to have to do this? Why would you do our next one? I mean, they didn't have any woman missionary until Dolores is the first one. Dolores is the first one. And this place is a bunch of old places. And a lot of this. There are books written about that. 
I didn't used to be. But then I can't say just being a woman necessarily makes for a good kind of commissioner or, or a police chief. Okay. It does. Yeah. It, it yes. does seem to change perspectives, though. It's, <laughs> it is interesting because they, the, the females that I work around now, on a lot of those, are much more thorough and much more. Uh, not all of them. I, mean, I can think of two or three that are particularly mm -hmm. not. But okay. it only change perspectives if they're good, they are, mm -hmm. and that's where we failed with with the police chief and and the sheriff. Yeah, that was it felt like such a great opportunity for change and it wasn't. It was, it was yeah, that was the underage women that yeah. succeed, but not fall over. Well, yeah, that becomes a challenge and you quit. That's not a good no. nobody gets anywhere that way. No. Anyway, I I agree with you. I uh Part we would like to see, but like you say, elect Miss Ken that right. be that for it's, it's, it's more important to have the right here's, person. Here's the catch. I'm curious about the reason why you have been able to run about one of us alone. And so the difference is that women don't want that position, don't want that job, or maybe feel like they don't want to. Yeah, I don't think anybody wants to. The thing about being married, everybody who's been married, you want to be able to they all enjoyed it. Yeah. I mean, once they get in there, are having a fun time. <laughs> I've, had some, I've had some good conversations. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, some of the, some of the, some of the names kind of things become slightly more precise. I won't get into that. <laughs> So just so we go back, I've actually known that there's some way to say there's a thought. It's just a thought. Think of someone you might think you could encourage because you're going to have to ask them. I don't think it's going to happen again. So it's kind of think about it. Yeah. Yeah. What are you doing there? I was going to say, Marshall for mayor is a good tag. <laughs> Is it fun? Is it fun? Yes, it is. Yeah. But I mean, there really are people who are certainly Yeah. But if you have to they actually need to make a decision when they're actually more. When does all that come up? When, when you can't actually pick up the uh, yeah. uh, middle of August. And then you have to put it back in the second week of September. Maybe about three weeks to get the uh, And mayors have to get 50 signatures a day. So you're going to have to get 21. Nope. Well, Patrick already said he wants to be City, but he thinks that they are race. So many more than that. There's first time I was running uh, three of us in the So there's maybe it wasn't that was there. Yeah, we forget. And I think that maybe uh, 50% of the city made it more so. Maybe that was a change. That would be a good thing, though, especially with all the risk that happens after the issue, with all the offices and things that have to have to fuck it up and have to It'd be nice to be able to listen to them talk. But yeah, this is the, I thought the police chief one was like when that came on the I clearly voted first. That was predestined. Yeah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I, I do spot a bank. I can't answer them on the heads a lot. I like to get heads a lot. He was like, 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 he didn't have a lot of presence. He's back in California. Is he? Oh, is he really? Is he still doing 
<laughs> we did. Uh, he was getting paid for a while. I mean, I wanted to cut him off. No, don't get me started. I mean, I've told Lori, she, she would handle him much better than I would. You know, I'd have fired him. And she didn't want to do that. So finally, we just did all the time. But that took a long time. And I find it, I found it rather aggravating. Partially because I come from the wild place. And, you know, just don't put up. Just don't put up. And there's still so much to that story. Yeah, you probably never. I know, and that's frustrating. <laughs> and it should be frustrating. You should say, you should know it's saying, you know. Yeah, anything you said, yeah. well, I'm not upset, you know, legal matters, and certainly employment matters that are being contested. That's great. Yes. That was, that was, that was a foregone conclusion. That's a family lawsuit this time. It's either happening. It's my opinion that it's not prevailed. I think he's got done I think the, the evidence evidence given is, is more than substantial. So we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he goes to correct them that by by that. If they make the record then, right? Now if they make the judge do the next question, I won't hear it. <laughs> so, uh, I thought that's what mayor was. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this will be an interesting, an interesting response to say. Because there are a couple of people on City Square that I would love to see. Cool. They expand the library to other places. Other places. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, I agree. Okay. But, 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 that was it for me. I was so pissed off at him. And so, but, you know, I met uh, John Scott, first time I ever met John Scott. We were in the Who, John? Yeah. He was a defense attorney for like this hour. So the first time I ever met him, he said, I'm a defense attorney. He had to warn me. And I said, well, and I hate your defense uh, And we had a very interesting conversation. He said, my first time I met him, I said, I don't know. I mean, seriously, we had a very open, you know, I've since become friends with John. Uh, he's, he's our new judge. He was just a deal. He was just a lawyer, just starting to get there. He's a late kind of judge. But he'll be good at it. Smart thing to do. Yeah. No, I think he's good. Yeah. 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 I respect that, even if I don't like the other. Well, that was really nothing compared to the other. Oh, yes. No, you were. It's funny because I, I, to this day, I like Mark Vincent. I just like him. Boy, did he back for a long time. It's slow. It's too bad. It's too bad. Just to give you the warm fuzzies. Huh? Just to give you the warm fuzzies. Thank you for the compliment. Right. I feel good about that. You know? <laughs> He had a young game in more game. Sometimes it's hard to get it. I like it. I still like it. And he's been around like that for so long. So his last group is really good. Not necessarily. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, he and I relate to the other that, so you know, we have some commonality and we'll talk about the thing. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
What's that now? Robles were here till 1976. Is that correct? The last year, Robles were here till 1976. He used to say that how he'd go in there. Leave him alone. Tell me about it. I was reading the Pioneer Club was open 24 hours a day. Closed the proper's being open 24 hours a day. Why was that? Because the military, the military wouldn't allow the soldiers to come into town. No, because they were open 24 hours. So that was the only impetus to. So is that why the military shut down? I'm sure there were other reasons. I know that's why. I barely remember. And they only allowed him to come back on leave when they changed the regulation to the park was at two o'clock. That was that was the final. Yeah, it was interesting. Only when that was a state Yes, it's a nice room. Now, was that back when they still had the back bar or no? Was the yeah. back bar gone? Yes. Okay. yes. And you so that was a while ago. Bullets in the ceiling, yeah. you know, from the old days of stepping, you know, the bricks in the ceiling. And we're still in the you know, yeah. as a rest of the day. Don't answer that question. We do, we do need a couple more restaurants. That would be really nice. It was really nice when you were so funny. It was cool, right? I'm sure I've heard a rumor that restaurants, you know, if they have more session on taste. Yeah, so I guess it's an existing question. That's all I want. You know, I didn't ask any second. Yeah. Well, it's a great location. It's something that doesn't like you. Yeah. 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 Please can continue. One of the buildings that I don't know if you're going to consider or not, so I don't think it's going to be a, a lot of exterior, is uh, Led Light Lake. That way, you know, it's going to support that project. They redo the foundation and uh, fix the drainage and she can live on the side. I don't know if they're doing anything else. She came before us two years ago with a proposal. She just didn't get the grant, and so they postponed it. But if they move forward with work, she'd be an excellent candidate because they were going to do a little bit of work on the entrance, on the entrance okay. facade, you which know, is one of the few catty yeah. corner entrance facades on the street. Interestingly enough, uh, the, the only 106 I've ever been involved in uh, was when they made the street several years ago. And of course, they had to do 106. They couldn't determine if there was no steps on the other that instance uh, were smart or not. So they had to redesign. They were done. They couldn't find any historic records Interesting. of that building. Where, where they show the steps. Almost all the photos, all the old photos are this side of Johnstown. It's hard to find stuff farther than the it's, it's, I look for them all the time, just trying to find our building and things on that side. And it's really difficult to find. Well, there were, but it was, you know, across the street, was just the opera house. And up here were all of the hotels, and people were taking pictures of the big buildings. And so sometimes you don't get a good perspective of some of the smaller buildings. So it's hard to find. That's a neat building. Oh, um, it's a fantastic building. And they got that old lift in the that basement and the lifts. That thing is, you know, they were able to have a blind spot downstairs in the basement. So Heather did. And uh, they never quite made it happen. Where all the details were. Yeah, they got the real lifts. They're doing a lot of things like this. Because they've done a nice job. It's a beautiful building.
and it's got some of the prettiest brickwork on here. Do you ever stand up and yeah, brickwork? Yeah, go across the street to Tennessee Pass and take a look at it. It's, it was a real honest thing. Nice. Nice. Not as pretty as your building is now, but. Our building is the most beautiful building. Exactly. I was thinking about the building. And then, you know, I was so fancy. I think you should look at the books. I didn't tell us. You know, I was a good doctor. And maybe I think that's true. Maybe. But I would and around all the so I know that who the sheriff is, and she has to fight and see who her name. I mean, I don't, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 That's true. Yeah. Well, see, maybe, yeah, it would be interesting going back to our earlier conversation to find out if St. George's, once the pandemic is over and you know, some of that uh, community outreach slows down, they'd be interested in doing some some community outreach from a maintenance standpoint. Yeah, once again, just following up fences. So, um, you know, smaller projects that could be handled by people volunteers. Well, and, and I know a bunch of the volunteers and we're working at you know, deliveries and things for a long time. So we have a ton of people that were online for that. I don't know if they would transition into doing it. We're talking, like that. we're talking about friends of the buildings. I mean, we have friends for years. Yeah. I know what's the friends of the Absolutely. I mean, and really, work with the city or work with the county that get a community dumpster to be set on a certain lot with a little bit of publicity. And then we really yeah. easy. I know. Yeah, and then and an immediate benefit. So yeah, there's starting to be more people around town who are interested in historic preservation, but there are only you know, so many seats. Right. But if they we can create a venue where they can channel their interests, yeah. Yeah. maybe a little time that would like you know, take lunch in this town to do the you know, sustainable all the Maybe when we do our survey, so that touch yeah. something. Yeah, we could maybe do and if we send out a fire or something. Yeah, yeah, sort of plants and stuff. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. I think there's a no need for it because of, I know that when we did our real, you know, when we first started out, and the people came and talked to me about it. I'm really interested in doing that. I'm kidding me. But, you know, they said, you know, the state is very interested well and, and the state's running into the same problem that everybody else is there aren't very many towns that haven't been 
Leadville is one that, yeah. 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 Just, yeah. just because of the amount of neglect here, there's yeah. a lot of opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of other towns, Breckenridge and Frisco and Dillon, and there are very few potential projects. And the ones that are there tend to go into the private business for no business to see. So there's still a lot of, there's still a lot of public opportunity, or at least visible opportunity. Yeah. You know, the fact that people had money back in the day, we have nice people. Some of the towns you go to, they might have a little but they're very plain. That's good. They're plain. But some other towns, they're just they just never. No, that's true. I didn't think about that, but that's true. And honestly, a lot of the reason that so many of ours still exist is because we were so good at People couldn't do anything to us if we didn't. So we still exist. Yeah. So I can't wait to revise the Manhattan. I can't wait until they get that 1970 signing up. Because I bet you that'll be a little bit too late. It'll be a lot of fun. But nobody's bought it yet, right? Yeah. Yeah. But I can't wait to see the story. I think. I think I mentioned this in our last meeting. The lighting inside of the Manhattan in the boss, I think, was installed by the same people that installed all the lighting for the theater. Now, the it's the same style. The mortars make the same kind of plaster going all the way around. I don't know. Oh, it just seems so. 1879 to this. I don't know. Yeah, but that. Uh, that's another one of those things. They didn't come in and, and tear it all down and get a drop ceiling or anything else. They just hung a few other fixtures and left the old stuff there. So it's all still there. It could be wished it hasn't been destroyed or ripped out because they couldn't afford to do anything with it or wouldn't pay to do anything with it. So it still exists by neglect, which I because whoever restores that building, that would be a real yeah. feature. Right. I just hope they don't make the Manhattan because the Manhattan is. You know, it's a cave. I mean, it is what it is. Yes. I just hope they can save it. Yes. They can save. They can save the top two thirds. The back of the building. Yeah. 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 on the back. Yeah. There's really no way to see that. I haven't heard that, but I do. In front of the building, I it's not good. Plus, the back of the building has been back there for two years. The new files. Literally, they have like 24 inches. Here. 12 inches. So go to the full circle and look at the back. So I'm going to be a swimmer. Almost. This is the roof lines back there. It's a, but that, that's probably a good thing for whoever likes to build it because the back is not, is not fronting the terrace. So therefore, they can do some pretty major renovations back there without affecting the rest of the building. And I understand that that those apartments up there, the people that have lived there for like maybe a hundred years, two hundred years, that they've just never left. Well, they're still there. Third bar is going on. Go down the stairs, <laughs> drink breakfast, go back. Yeah. Come in. Some of those people have been there a very long time. Uh, so it's all of them. He lived upstairs. And his whole life he wandered around downstairs, scaring the hell out of me. So the the Szechuan buildings, they have tended to have been there for twenty years. Really? Yeah, one of the sources have been there for a long time. I didn't know that. Yeah, I have a question. That one's going to touch it. Yeah. Yeah. Now is the the Thank <laughs> you. 
and I think now it's lower than that. I think it's like 800. Yeah, eventually, it could be a force for somebody, but then you've got to invest how much. Yeah, yeah the cost of the building is. is uh, yeah, it is probably a third of the total power that we is it we say is it still gonna take you back on your oh did it pass is all gonna be then everybody else right now picking up yeah, yeah, it is your last paper that I figured out. Yeah, Let's just tell you, I did a article for the newspaper that will come out this summer about my top 10 letter gradients. So it needs to see some of those titles. So, yeah, let's go. Yeah, let's go. Is it that it was published in the 80s? 79 or 80. I've got that one. Sledville, you're going to say. I think you read that one. Yeah, is that one for some of my research for Colorado? Absolutely. Because there are only really a handful like good histories that count that I felt like I could trust. Because a lot of them are, you know, like these old like mining towns and fable kind of things and yeah the only once you start getting in the 70s and 80s that then some people start doing like some real history <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I was reading. I kind of breezed through it a couple years ago, and I'm really reading that now. It's and then I'm a lot of people too. Yeah, yeah. Everything's just sort of like a name and an air. It's a lot harder to ever. So, once you can recognize the names and recognize the different parts of town, it really is pretty good. Yeah. You all sell some of that here? Yeah. Have a lot of, got a pretty good collection of books. Somebody wrote a book about climates. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, or uh, students or something? Uh, well, not Stephen, not that okay. This is an old book. Uh, 
It's a work called Gray Cove. It's gonna, I've only ever found two copies yeah, in the world. I haven't seen that. Before. So I've got one at home and one at the shop. But uh, yeah, interesting, interesting book, and it was all the panic to when it was cross bank and all the different things and everything else. Yeah, well, trying to figure out Becky can play sometimes. You get some of these yeah, there's no bookstore in town. Yes. Yeah, there is a bookstore in town. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I just bought a new collection of old railroad, high rocky railroad. That's a rat. I've never gone down. Railroad history people. I bought a lot of collection of guy in the for since late 80s. And for 30 years, he came to our office every summer and researched railroads. All the highlight is all the, all the really bizarre and unusual stuff. And I bought his entire collection. Life was not a hundred percent pleased. I'm not quite sure what we're going to do with all that yet. So we'll see. Some of those books are start doing research on some of those books really expensive. Yeah, I guess my thousand dollars on set. I might never find the person willing to pay that. I'm getting I <laughs> 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 City will replace yeah, us. You didn't build a bigger thing or uh, get a uh, oh. I didn't get the top of the door. Oh, Steve Mercado. Oh. He um, used to work at the hospital and now he uh, works at the hospital. I think he's suing one, but who isn't? <laughs> he works for Vero Internet now. Vero okay. Um, like Chapin said, we can talk at our next meeting about how to. Um, better advertise this and how this went, but we can kind of do that at our next meeting, not to keep everybody. Mm -hmm. I think we should have cocktails. That might bring more people. <laughs> well, I already mentioned the wine. Is that, a, is, against, is, is that against the rules here at City Hall? For a hundred dollar permit fee, it's not. <laughs> I'm going to say, you have to have a, a special permit liquor license to do that. That's what everybody says. Uh, 
And I understand it's not that hard to get, right? No, it's not that hard to get. <laughs> Anyway, I bet you could expedite. Oh. <laughs> yes, but I you know someone, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we are. It was still interesting to talk to people here, you know. Very good. Yeah. And so I think we're ready to, I'm ready to hear a motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn. Second? A second. second. All in favor? All aye. 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 What? For the record, I'm not sure which of these three, right? Okay. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. We are adjourned as of 604. Right. Our members are battery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the clock is back. I think it's too late. This is a lot of experience. Yeah, 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 yeah,